Influenza virus is the cause of a respiratory disease called influenza, commonly known as the flu. Let's have a closer look at the influenza virus. The virus is made up of an inner core of genetic material surrounded by an envelope. It has several types of proteins on the inside and also on the envelope. The outer proteins help the virus attach and enter into cells. There are three main types of influenza virus based on the types of proteins it has, A, B, and C. A and B cause epidemics, whereas C is not known to and only causes mild illness. Unlike other types, the influenza A virus is further divided into subtypes based on two of its surface proteins, H and N. There are at least 18 H types and 11 N types. Viruses can have several combinations of these two. So for example, there can be H1N1, H3N2, or H5N1 viruses. Also, even within those subtypes, there are differences that make the virus unique. Now, the structure of the virus is determined by its gene. The influenza gene has a habit of changing quite a bit when it replicates, resulting in the creation of new strains of the virus. It gets more complicated. The influenza virus can infect other animals, and sometimes humans can infect animals, and animals can infect humans as well. All this can lead to mixing of the virus genes and the creation of all sorts of new virus types with bits of genes from different sources. For example, the 2009 pandemic virus is a mix of pig, bird, and human genes. Okay, so there are many different types of flu viruses out there. What's the big deal? Well, when people are infected by a particular strain of the flu virus, the body's immune system produces antibodies to fight that virus. The problem is, these antibodies are quite specific for that particular strain and don't work all that well for the other strains. The more different the strains are, the less effective the antibodies are at fighting it. That's why people can have the flu more than once. Small changes are called drifts, and they happen all the time. However, ever so often there's a shift, or a major change of the virus. This leads to the creation of a completely new type of influenza virus which people have hardly any immunity to. This lack of immunity can result in millions of people around the world getting infected with this new type of virus. When this happens, it's called a pandemic. The largest flu pandemic was in 1918, killing up to 50 million people. The most recent pandemic was in 2009. Okay, so how common is the flu? People all over the world can get the flu. It's estimated that each year about 20% of children and 5% of adults around the world get influenza. In temperate climates, influenza is seasonal and tends to occur more commonly in the colder months. In tropical climates, however, it can occur throughout the year. How does it spread? When a person with the flu coughs or sneezes, they produce droplets that contain the influenza virus. People can catch the flu virus through the air or if they touch something that is contaminated with the virus and then touch their nose, mouth or eyes. People can spread the flu even before they start showing symptoms. They're infectious for about a day before symptoms start and up to five to seven days after. Children and those who are immunocompromised are infectious for longer. Once someone gets infected with the virus, it takes about two to three days for symptoms to appear. These usually include high fever, sore throat, runny nose, cough, muscle and joint pain, headache, and generally feeling unwell. Other symptoms can include abdominal pain, diarrhea, or vomiting. Although most people recover in about a week, it can cause severe illness in some high-risk groups. These include young children, those who are old, people with chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease or immune suppression, and women who are pregnant. Complications include pneumonia and worsening of existing medical conditions. Influenza can also cause cardiac and neurological complications. Sometimes secondary bacterial infections can occur, leading to severe disease and death. There are a number of different lab tests that can be used to diagnose the disease. The most commonly used test is a PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, and is done on a nose or throat swab. This test identifies the virus based on its genetic fingerprint. Most people recover from the flu by supportive treatment, which includes plenty of rest, good hydration, and medicines to relieve symptoms. Antiviral medications are sometimes used to reduce the length of symptoms and the risk of complications. The best way to protect against influenza is to get vaccinated. It not only protects the person, but reduces the spread of the flu to those who are vulnerable like young children, the elderly, and those who are sick. Therefore, it's recommended specially for those who live, care for, or work with those groups. The flu virus changes all the time. Remember drifts? Because of this, new flu vaccines are made every year to match the circulating flu strains, and annual vaccination is required. How well the vaccine works depends on how closely the vaccine matches the circulating strains 
and also the characteristics of the person being vaccinated, like age and health. Other ways to protect against the flu are hygiene measures like washing your hands regularly and covering your mouth and nose when sneezing. Masks, if worn properly, can also reduce transmission. People with the flu should limit contact with others to prevent spreading the infection. For more information about influenza and the influenza vaccine, talk to your healthcare provider and have a look at the websites below.